Welcome to another broadcast of AM Excellence 68, Your Habits and Dreams. Now, I'm streaming today's video from my Spaniard page. If you normally tune in to my personal profile page, obviously today I'm running it off of my Spaniard page. Now, I will figure this recipe out. I'm trying to see which which option creates the the gets the most viewers, to be honest, who who which platform exposes these videos to the most viewers. So I'm trying this recipe out. Bear with me until I get it figured out. And then once we get it figured out, it will be set in stone. It won't change. But until we get there, I appreciate you bearing with me. I will post the night before. I'm also messing around with some different times. But I will post the night before the specific time and which platform I'm going to be posting these videos until we get it set in stone. And then it'll be full bore. So we are reading the book Above the Line by Urban Meyer. Above the Line, Lessons in Leadership and Life from a Championship Season. Now I wrote a few notes, which I normally don't do, but I wrote a few notes here. Now yesterday we were talking about this thing called the 10-80-10 rule. And he's saying that a behavioral law, a behavioral rule is that 10% of the people are the high achievers, the highly motivated, then 80%, the big chunk of people, are the people in between, the people who are pretty good, are you know average, they do the work, etc. And then the bottom 10% are the people who just are resistant to improvement, resistant to change, resistant to influence from other people. They have already made up their mind. Now today he he mentions four he mentions four ways to influence people to go from the eighty percent all the way back up you know to pull them into that top ten percent and yesterday we talked about the first way through mastery and belief you've got to convince someone if you're trying to lead someone be it a team be it a company be it a department be it your family your children you have to convince them of mastery and belief you have to let them know that you know what in the heck you're talking about so one way to pull people up to the 10 percent is through mastery and belief the next way is harnessing the power you've got to use these influencers people of influence to pull the 10, the, the 80 percenters up. You've got to send them out. Hey, let's recruit some more 10 percenters. The last one, what I'm going to start with today is this idea of ownership. Think in your own life. Do you take ownership? Do you have ownership of the things in which you are involved? Do you take ownership of your thoughts and your actions? Or do you blame, complain, and make excuses? Ask yourself this right now. Do you blame, do you complain, and do you make excuses? Do you or don't you? The idea that Urban Meyer is saying right now is this idea of not only just taking ownership in what you do, but if you want to motivate someone, if you want to encourage someone, inspire someone, enact change in someone's life, you've got to give ownership to them in whatever that process is. If it's your family, get your kids involved in the decisions of the family. Little details, where you're going on vacation, things like that. If you're a company, if you're a department, get your staff Get your staff involved. Andrew, thanks for joining. I'm glad you found me. Get your staff involved in the decisions because once someone feels ownership of something, they're that much more motivated, inspired to do, to go the extra mile, to dedicate themselves. Urban Meyer says, when a player or employee feels an ownership stake in what's going on, he gives maximum effort. The more ways your people can share ownership, the more loyal and committed they are going to be. Now, Urban Meyer goes on to talk about this idea of positive peer pressure. He goes on to talk about positive peer pressure and the importance of your surroundings. In your life right now, it's 6.04 in the morning, you're about to go out into your world. Consider consider the 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 environment that you're putting yourself into. Who are you who are you talking to? What are you listening to? What are you watching? Are you did you roll out of bed and boom, click your phone and look at all the emails, all the text messages, all the notifications on social media? Was that the first thing you did? That's the environment that you're creating. Yesterday I threw out a challenge and I'll re throw out this challenge right here. I challenge you starting tomorrow, because today has already happened, I challenge you tomorrow to roll out of bed, fight the urge 
to check your phone as the first thing you do. Fight the urge. The first thing I challenge you, the first thing you do, roll out of bed tomorrow, whatever time it is, have the first thing you do be watch AM Excellence. Have that be the first thing you do. Take control, take ownership, ownership, we're talking about the thing, ownership of your day. Get your mind right before the day attacks you. I like to say, you happen to life, don't let life happen to you. Take that ownership in your day, you make the first decision, hold off on checking your phone, first thing you do, watch AM Excellence tomorrow. See how hard it is, I do it every morning. I take my phone off the charger, pull it in my pocket. It's like burning a hole through my pocket, wants me to look at it and I say, no, 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 no. Sorry, Martin, I appreciate you tuning in. All right, so that's talking about ownership. Now, the next, the, the, the title of this video is called Your Habits and Dreams. Your Habits and Dreams. So every one of us that's watching, I'm not gonna say every one of us because there are those bottom 10% who just don't care. Every one of us in, who's watching, I would, no, I bet a significant, I bet a pretty penny on the fact that you've had hopes and dreams. Either as a kid, middle school, high school, grown up, now, ambitions, personal, professional, etc. If you took an audit, or if someone took an audit of your actions and how they relate to your dreams, where's that gonna be? My dream is to be the most sought after speaker and influencer in the United States. That's it, that's my dream. So I've gotta take a look at myself on a daily basis and say, okay, are my habits, are my actions in alignment with that dream? And every day, no, the answer is no. The, on Saturday, I, I got five slices of pizza and a big soda and sat down and ate and did nothing productive because I'm human and I enjoyed it, right? But you've got to ask yourself, th does that happen a lot? Are you having a lot of those moments, a lot of those afternoons turn into days, weeks, months where you're not doing anything in your life to move forward to get those dreams done? You've got to, you've got to ask yourself, are your habits in alignment with your dreams? Do you want to lose weight? Do you want to get a promotion? Do you want to become a speaker? Do you want to write music? Do, do you want to run a marathon? Whatever it is, you've got to do an audit. Do a self audit or bring someone in. Hire a coach or a friend. Develop an accountability partner. I just read this morning Eric Thomas, who's a, who's a big time speaker. He's the, uh, he's the guy that if you've ever heard the, the talk on YouTube or anywhere else that says if you want to breathe if you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe right that guy i just read one of his posts this morning that said successful people develop accountability partners right use this video as your first accountability partner tomorrow don't check your phone watch the video urban meyer goes on to say he was talking to a kid he was talking to a, a football player on his team who was not maximizing his genetic potential and he said to the kid he said i know you have big dreams i want to help you fulfill them but if your habits don't reflect your dreams and goals, you can either change your habits or change your dreams and goals. Pretty powerful. He goes on to say, if your habits are not if your habits are not in alignment with your dreams, you have two choices. If your habits are not in alignment with your dreams, you can lower your dreams, elevate your habits. It's a math equation. If your habits are not in alignment with your dreams, you do have two choices, you have two options. As a leader, it's always good to give the, your, 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 the people underneath you choices, right? I have a three-year-old, I give her choices all the time. You want the pink socks or the blue socks? That's it, right? But you do have a choice as well. You can lower your dreams, elevate your habits. It's that simple. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is this idea of small victories. If you're in a leadership or a management position, my, my chair is squeaky. If you're in a management and lead or leadership position, which all of us are in, to some degree, and if, you, if, and if you would say no to that, I would challenge you and say, yes, you are because you're leading yourself on a daily basis. And Urban Meyer mentioned this idea of small victories. 
small victories. If you want to make a change, if you want to encourage, inspire change in someone else, don't make it. Some people are prepped. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to speak in absolute here. Some people are prepped for, you know, hard line change, you know, stop drinking today, stop smoking today, stop drinking soda today, hard line. But Urban Meyer stresses this importance of small victories when leading someone else. And then I'm going to add to that when you lead yourself. He says, small victories can play a major role when you have a player who is dealing with the stress of change or even some other issue. Do whatever you can to reinforce someone's confidence by helping him achieve small victories. A small victory might be drinking one less soda this week. A small victory might be um, stepping outside of your comfort zone and making a phone call to someone. And yeah, that's a small victory. Or, you know, for my daughter, a small victory would be, you know, when, when, when we're potty chaining, going to the potty the first time. Those are small victories, small wins that are only going to help reinforce confidence in the pursuit of these big, crazy goals. Because if you're standing at the bottom of Mount Everest and you want to climb Mount Everest, pretty daunting task. A small victory, hey, why don't we go climb like a 500 foot mountain or a 5,000 foot mountain first? That is a small victory. And I often, we're going to start to wrap this up here. I often reference John Wooden. And there's a book out there that I would highly, highly, highly recommend you read. It's John, a John Wooden book. I honestly don't remember the title of it. It's something about philosophies and strategies of a winning coach. John Wooden, it's blue and it's yellow. Super easy read. It's basically 200 pages of just insight and perspective from probably the most successful coach of all time. And there's a quote that he says, Urban Meyer references it. So it's one great coach referencing another great coach. And he says, failure is not fatal, but a failure to change might be. Failure is not fatal, but a failure to change might be. And what that is saying is, as you, as you grow, as you learn, as you try new things, as you explore the world, I know I'm 35 and there are things that, that I thought five years ago that completely don't think now. I realize I've changed. Maybe I was wrong in the past. Um, fa failure is not fatal, right? But if you have it in your head that you know everything, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, that the inability to learn and the inability to change may be your downfall. So real quick, I just want to reiterate we're talking about the 10, 80, 10 rule. I wrapped up that chapter today. If you are looking to either one, yourself, go from one group to the next, or you're looking to influence the people around you to pull them up to your next level, the four ways to do it are through mastery and belief. You have to convince them, right? You have to convince them. They need to believe that you know what the heck you're talking about. Why are you listening to me right now? Is it because I'm a talking head? I hope not. I hope you find some sort of uh, belief in my resume. I understand that that there's plenty of people out there just talking. Talk. No, you have to make people know, prove that you know what the heck you're talking about. Harness the power. If you are a person of influence, if you're in a position of influence, use that. Harness the power for good. If you want to make that jump to the next 10%, surround yourself with those people. It's an active, intentional decision. Do it. Do it. Build ownership. Become involved. Make decisions. Take ownership of yourself and the, the thing that you are a part of. Don't blame. Don't complain. Don't make excuses. Tomorrow, when you roll out of bed, fight the urge to check your phone. First thing you do, watch AM Excellence, get your mind right, then attack the day. And the last thing is this idea of positive peer pressure, the power of your environment. Surround yourself with the best. Positive peer pressure. Hope you all enjoyed AM Excellence 68. Man, we're flying by here. It's already been over two months. Now, if you've been enjoying these videos and you haven't, checked out my book, Driven, My Unlikely Journey from Classroom to Cage, I would encourage you visit Amazon.com. Just search Charlie Brenneman. The book will come up. If you have read it and enjoyed it, 
reviews are greatly appreciated. The holidays are coming up. It makes for a great Christmas gift. Have yourselves a great Tuesday. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I will post on my page today. I will post where and when I will be streaming tomorrow morning. Again, I'm trying to figure out the best mix where we can reach the most people. And in the meantime, I apologize for any inconvenience. Carpe diem, fight well.